Have you ever sat through a movie and cried or laughed while knowing it's a movie? Or have you ever heard a couple of uh, new songs on the radio and realized that you are humming the same song again and again? Yes. We are shaped by what we see, what we hear and what we do. And if that is true for us, it is much more for children. So today we are going to talk about screen time and its impact. So what is screen time and its impact? Just to understand the science behind it, whenever we see something, do something or hear something, the brain cells, which is the neurons, get triggered and there's a new pathway which is formed. So if it's something that you've done before and you're repeating it, it becomes strong. So definitely as parents, it's very important for us to know that what they are hearing, what children are hearing, what children are seeing and what children are doing is going to shape up their entire life. We've heard a lot of people come to us and say, you know, I watched a movie which was very disturbing and I couldn't sleep for a you know, week or a month. And if that is so for adults, imagine the impact on children. So let's go a little bit more deeper into understanding this screen time. Screen time is basically today become a dilemma for parents. Why is it a dilemma? It's a dilemma because today children are digital babies. We cannot take them off technology. We cannot say that we will not give you gadgets because then they'll be handicapped into a world which is fully digital. But also comes with it the challenge that they cannot be there with technology, with the screen time for more than some optimum time. How do you decide this optimum time? Or how do you know that the child is going beyond the optimum time? So there's no exact calculation to it or a formula to it, but it's more of an understanding that the parent has to bring, which means that we need to understand it more. So first thing is for us to understand how do you, you know, really count out or how do you point out that a child is going through screen addiction? Screen addiction is also called digital heroine which is exactly like, you know, drugging a child. The child feels that, you know, that's the only thing which will make them happy or the child is lost in technology. The child is, you know, lost with the screen and wants to, you know, go back to it every time that he finds himself free, right? Also, things like, you know, it starts thwarting the relationship with the parents in the family. You realize conflicts are coming up because of that. Children are uh, going more into their cocoon. They don't want to interact, but they want to go back to their screen. Screen could be in different forms. Today, uh, children have access to tabs. They have access to phones. They have access to computers. They have access to TV. And all of them, if you see, has a very, very high stimulation. When I say stimulation, as human beings, a mother may just speak through, you know, tone and may not be really very dramatic in her uh, facial expression or a father may be very good with the facial expression, but may just have a soft tone. But on the screen, the visual, the auditory and the movement, it's like completely stimulating. It's the best of what it can be. We can't compete with it. We can't be like the, you know, the the characters on the screen or the, you know, actors on the screen. So obviously that media takes over the, you know, entire prominence compared to other human beings around. And at that phase, scientifically, it says that, you know, screen time, which is what we said, digital heroine, triggers and stimulates the reward mechanism or the pleasure parts of the brain of a child. These, you know, aspects of the brain are supposed to be developing, but instead they become addicted. So that is why it's very important for us as parents to spot out that, you know, a child is going through screen addiction and or will get into it and, you know, bring in an atmosphere which can appropriately handle. Because considering that maximum brain development happens by the time of seven and then the, you know, further building happens till the age of 12 and 13, it's very important that we really, you know, play, uh, you know, pay a close attention to this entire uh, syndrome which is happening around us. Today, a lot of countries are waking up to it and there's immense uh, you know focus towards understanding you know how to deal with children and research around saying what we can do about it and it's time that I think we as uh, you know parents also wake up to it and you know take actions around it so let's understand um, what exactly happens so we are saying yes there is impact on children and there's a heavy impact on children it uh, definitely you know going beyond a certain time with the screen definitely impairs their development What kind of impairment in development or how does it, uh, you know, really affect development in children? 
So let's look at uh, four or five aspects to it. There is something called, uh, you know, impact on your physiology, the way children will use their body. Have you observed children lately use screen? Either they're lying down using it or they're sitting down and bending down. The moment they sit down and bend down, their entire, you know, body, the time in which the spine is getting built and the neck and alignment which is going to happen is going this way which is definitely seen as a major threat for them as you, you know, go forward, which also has a direct correlation to the way they will process and use their brain. It impacts their blood circulation. It impacts maybe children could pick up, uh, you know, heavy shoulders. They could pick up, uh, you know, dis-ease in the way they use their neck. In fact, very little kids, you know, six, seven-year-olds are complaining of neck pain and shoulder pain. So it definitely has an impact on the physiology. Then the next thing to look at is what is the impact on their psychology? Most of the children who are on screen, you know, the moment you take them off screen, they become irritated. They don't want to talk to people. They don't want to interact. They want to be in their own world. And the worst part is, just like how we discussed earlier, you know, whenever we've seen a, uh, you know, very stimulating uh, image on the screen, it keeps flashing in our head even for long, which is if you have seen any movies long before and it was very disturbing or it was very exciting, you would see that that's again and again coming to you. Which means that the time that the child is supposed to build on creativity is now being narrowed down because he's seeing the same images repeat in his head. It could be from a video game, it could be from a movie, it could be from a video, it could be from a rhyme that he's been seeing. But he will be again and again repeating that in his head, which means that there is very little scope for the other things to happen, the other development to happen. Another very important thing is especially the children between 5 to 12. The way they learn is by observing their environment. Every time they observe people, the way they talk, the tones used, they look up at people and then their brain tries to copy and they, you know, pick it up as a skill and they improve their language skills, social skills, interpersonal skills, you know, their confidence and a lot of things. Now, when a child is on a screen, he is definitely not watching anybody else around. Try speaking to a child who is busy playing a video game. He wouldn't even respond back. Which means that naturally a child is missing out on the opportunities of development, especially the psychological development. Another very important thing is what is the future implication of you know being a screen child? The future implication very clearly is a child who has been on you know screen uh, screen heroin or what we call digital heroin will definitely have a lot of challenge dealing with relationships as he grows up. We'll also have a ch you know, challenge in processing the environment real time. He may be very good with digital screen, may be able to score very high points on the video games he's playing, may have very good uh, you know, skills to be very fast with processing, but may be finding it really difficult to be able to sense you know, different uh, uh, smells, different kinds of uh, textures and different kinds of uh, sensory aspects which is required for a human being to you know, survive and go through. So these are certain impacts and there are many more. This is a large topic and we are just touching on the iceberg of it.